people of God. God is visiting his people. The new move of God has already begun and blindness in the church is now going to be exposed. The prophets who repented, you remember in the last election cycle, we had prophets who repented. They were receiving death threats, not from people in the world, from people in the church. Asbury, Asbury begins and what is it? All of a sudden we're getting all kinds of, of political commentary. Well, if it was really a revival, this and such and this and such would happen and there would be this and such and there was all kinds of critique and criticism and even cursing. The Jesus Revolution movie, did you go see it? I went and saw it, I wept through the entire thing but there was a scene there was a scene at one point when the pastor was criticized because those hippies had dirty feet and were dirtying their carpet. And you know the people, there were some people in the church who could not see what God was doing in that moment and they left the church. Why? Because it was a religious spirit. It didn't conform to the conventions that they thought it should measure up to. Can you see? If we are caught up in a religious system, critiquing and judging and measuring by corrupted, ungodly standard, we cannot see what God is doing and we will miss the prophetic insight that God desires us to have for this time and this season. He is about to bring a brand new harvest and a new move of God and he's about to do some new things and it's going to draw a line in the sand. God is calling our churches to come back to the heart of worship and become again a place for sin, where sinners are welcome and where people come to encounter the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, his healing and his restoration and find their place in the community of saints, a place where they can learn to see and then they can begin to sing. The woman had been bound by her many sins, yes, but also by a religious spirit that shrouded her in shame because of the system, ever reminding her that she was unholy, impure, without remedy. And then she meets Jesus, the God of justice and mercy and compassion, who comes to make her clean and whole and brand new. She's rescued from her brokenness and the brokenness of the system. And she's rescued from the religious spirit and she no longer wears her shame and she refuses now to skulk around in dark for fear of being called out for her sin or called upon for sexual favors. It is not she who, it is not who she is anymore, even when she lets down her hair in public. And like Samson, who when his hair had grown back, lets down his hair and brings down the house. Oh yes, there is a worship that defies the religious spirit. It refuses to conform. It is so enraptured looking at our Jesus that it loses sight of the culture around us. It is so full and overwhelmed with gratitude that it cannot keep from gushing out. It costs something because it received something so precious, so sacred that it's worth a hundred times more than I could ever give all of my treasure, all of my heart, all of my life, all of my words. How about you? It is abandoned and it is without caution of repercussion. Listen, with this next move of God, there's going to be a new sound and it's going to be a new song. And the song of this move of God are going to be sung by those who see, who have looked in the mirror, examined themselves and allowed the Holy Spirit to remind them that we are all hamartia, we are all sinners saved by grace. We are all, we all once were bound, rejected, and plagued by shame. And the song of this next move of God is going to be sung by those who allow gratitude and thanksgiving to overtake their dignity by those who will be found weeping at the feet of Jesus. When was the last time you threw yourself at the feet of Jesus in such abandoned gratitude for all he has done in your life that any religious spirit in the room started to manifest and flee? How long has it been since the worship we offered in the church causes demons to get stirred up, manifest and flee and drew in the hearts of unbelievers? When was the last time we threw off our dignity 
in preference for the sheer delight of worshiping our Jesus who gave his life so we might have ours. What is the Spirit saying? Oh, I'm going to tell you. It's time to come back to the heart of worship because it's all about Jesus. It is all about what he has done, how he died and set us free, what he did for us that we could never do for ourselves, how we knew we were sinners. And yet, while we were still in our sins, he died, forgave us, redeemed us, healed us. Oh, can you see? People of God, the harvest is coming. And I'm telling you that I'm telling you the man in a dress is coming to your church. And I want to know, I want to know, Are you going to come to the altar and kneel with him and worship one sinner beside another? Are you going to stand afar off with your religious spirit and cross your arms and raise your eyebrow and say, oh, you know, that man is a sinner. I'm telling you it's going to happen. The woman with her lover and her wife is coming in. The child who identifies as a dog the extremists, the political left, the political right, the armed, the unarmed, from every tribe, race, and nation. And will we run to the altar to kneel with them and worship the Lord our God together? Or are we going to be blinded by our religion? Do you see? And will you sing? I know we have all come to this conference to be encouraged and ministered to and prophesied over. But what if we begin this conference by first ministering to Jesus? What if we spend a few minutes right now with all the lights on, no, no accompaniment, a cappella, just allowing the Holy Spirit to search our hearts to see if there is any religious corruption that has come into our hearts? that has made us feel superior to some other sinner in the world who does not yet know Jesus? What if we allowed all across this room, just worship begin to rise up before Jesus? Listen, I believe over the course of this conflict conference, God is gonna make us ready for the revival that is already on our doorstep. I believe over these next few days, God is gonna heal, he's gonna restore, he's gonna bring breakthrough that we've been asking for. But first, I think we need to repent for cooperating with any unrighteous judgment or any false ungodly measurements that have been created by a religious system that was instigated by a religious spirit. I'm telling you, this is not for condemnation. This is for healing and restoration so that the church can once again be powerful and influential and be participants in this next move of God. I believe that God wants to open our eyes to see a fresh vision of Jesus and break our hearts for what breaks his so we can receive the heart harvest that is right now on our doorstep. Would you bow your heads with me?